Hello, welcome to a guide on how to solve the gem puzzles in Victory Road of Pokemon Reborn. I might be in the minority when I say that I really enjoy the puzzles that this game has provided, but I can see how these gem puzzles in particular could be pretty annoying. So in this video, I'll be going over not just the solutions to all of these puzzles, but the process of how I would solve them. And to help, I made this lovely spreadsheet um, where you can type in an X where you know that that gem cannot be that particular category. Or you can type in an O if you think you got the answer for one of them, and the cells will automatically light up. Uh, I linked this spreadsheet in the description. And this will be very helpful when solving moving forward. And at the end, once the puzzle solved, you get something like this, and the green O's indicate uh, the location where you push that stone in that category. So without further ado, let's begin with the first puzzle. All right, so the first puzzle isn't that difficult. Uh, there are only three categories. Uh, uh, so let's start by going through the clues. Uh, and what I like to do is I go through the clues one by one and then update the spreadsheet or add certain constraints below the appropriate category, um, depending on what the clue says. So to start off, no two crystals share any same quality. That is a clue that is common among all of these puzzles. Uh, so basically from that, we can conclude that there will not be any duplicates in any column. Uh, by the design of the puzzle, there cannot be any duplicates in any row either. So uh, there will be one answer in every row and one answer in every column. Uh, clue number two, the hardness of Ruby is seven. So that's an answer we have right here. Hardness of Ruby is seven. And because of the first clue and the design of the puzzle, nothing else can have a hardness of seven and Ruby cannot have any other hardness. Clue number three, Ruby is larger than Amethyst, but is not the largest. So uh, we know that Ruby is not the largest, so we can eliminate large right off the bat. And Ruby is larger than Amethyst, so we know that Amethyst is smaller than Ruby. Clue number four, Amethyst's purity is middling. Uh, so that is another answer that is given to us right off the bat. Uh, so we can eliminate any other options for Amethyst and for middling. Uh, clue number five, the pure gem is medium sized. So we know that the medium sized gem, whatever that is, is the same as the pure gem. And we know that the pure gem is the same as the medium sized gem. I like to put the constraints on both categories so it's just easier to spot later on. Uh, clue six, emerald is less pure than ruby, but more pure than sapphire. So emerald is less pure than ruby, but it's more pure than sapphire. So sapphire is less pure than emerald. The smallest gem is also the softest. So that means the minuscule gem is also the one with a hardness of five. Uh, hardness of five is the same as the minuscule gem. Uh, Sapphire's hardness is less than Emerald's hardness. So we can place that constraint there. And last clue, the largest gem is the least pure. So the largest gem must be the impure gem because the impure gem is the least pure. And I can apply the same thing here. All right. Now let's see what we steps we can take next. Well, first uh, we know that uh, amethyst is less is smaller than ruby. Uh, so because amethyst is smaller than a gem, amethyst cannot be the largest. Uh, similarly, ruby cannot be the smallest. Uh, here, same conclusion, sapphire is softer than emerald, so sapphire cannot be the hardest because it's softer than a gem, and emerald cannot be the softest. Uh, here, uh, sapphire is soft, is less pure than two gems, meaning, uh, sapphire cannot be, uh, either of the two most pure. 
Uh, similarly, Ruby cannot be either of the two least pure because it is purer than two gems. Emerald is purer than one gem, but less pure than another gem. Uh, so we know that Emerald cannot be in either of the extremes. So now we have Emerald solved. We have Sapphire solved. And through process of elimination, Ruby is now flawless. Okay. Uh, we know that pure is medium. Uh, so uh, Emerald is pure, therefore Emerald is also medium. So we have that solved now. Uh, and once I check things off, I like to remove this here just so it's less cluttered. Uh, so we've solved that. Um, well, now we know that large has to be sapphire. Because that's the only option left. Uh, and that matches impure, that just uh, serves as confirmation. Uh, okay. Now, what is next? Oh, Amethyst is smaller than Ruby. Uh, and Amethyst and Ruby are the only two that haven't been cited yet. Oh, also Ruby's solved just from what we have so far. So that is, that wraps up size. Uh, we know that the gem with hardness five has to be the minuscule one, which is Amethyst. So that solves that. And Sapphire and Emerald are the remaining ones. Uh, we know Emerald has to have a hardness of eight because that's the only remaining option left. And uh, Sapphire has a hardness of six. And with that, we have a solution for the first puzzle. All right, on to puzzle number two. This time there are four categories, making this slightly harder. Uh, first clue, no two crystals share any same quality, just like the previous puzzle, no repeats in any column. The second hardest gem is pure. So we know the second hardest gem is the gem with hardness of seven. So the gem with hardness of seven is equal to the pure gem. Uh, likewise, the pure gem is equal to the gem with a hardness of seven. Uh, Ruby has more foliation than, and is larger than Sapphire. So Sapphire has less foliation than Ruby, and Sapphire is also smaller than Ruby. Uh, two, four. Sapphire is more pure than Amethyst. Uh, so if we go to purity, Amethyst is less pure than Sapphire. Uh, the third hardest gem is of middling purity. So that is a gem with hardness of six. And that's middling. Uh, similarly, middling, hardness of six. Um, neither emerald nor amethyst is either the least or the most pure. So emerald and amethyst, both of them cannot be impure and cannot be flawless. The hardest gem has the most foliation. Uh, most foliation is eminent. So the gem with hardness of eight has eminent foliation. Um, sapphire has less foliation than the pure gem, which has less foliation than amethyst. So sapphire has less foliation than the pure gem, which has less foliation than amethyst. The softest gem is the smallest one, so the gem of hardness of 5 is minuscule. And minuscule hardness of 5. And emerald is smaller than ruby, which is smaller than amethyst. Emerald is smaller than ruby, which is smaller than amethyst. Okay, so... Um, first of all, uh, because Sapphire is less than Pure, which is less than Amethyst, that means the Pure Gem cannot be either Sapphire or Amethyst. So Pure cannot be Sapphire, and cannot be Amethyst. Um, alright, uh, Amethyst is larger than Ruby, and Ruby is larger than two gems. That means Amethyst is larger than three gems, so it has to be large. There's no other option. And Ruby has to be the second largest, which is medium. So that solves this.
Okay, uh, between Sapphire and Emerald, it doesn't look like we can make any conclusions about either one of those. Um, oh, we know that Amethyst has to be middling, so that's solved. And we know that Emerald has to be pure, so that is solved. Uh, because Amethyst is less pure than Sapphire, the only slots available for that is Flawless. So Sapphire must be Flawless, and Ruby must be Impure. And from that, we know that uh, Emerald is, because Emerald's pure, Emerald's the one with a hardness of 7. So Emerald has a hardness of 7, so there's that. Uh, and Middling has a hardness of 6, which is Amethyst, so Amethyst has a hardness of 6. Um, and that covers this one. Okay, uh, we know that Pure is Emerald, so we can modify this constraint. And it looks like Sapphire is has less foliation than all of these gems, which means that Sapphire must be indistinct. Uh, as of now, it doesn't look like we can make any conclusions about the rest of that. Um... Sapphire is less than Oh, we know that um, Amethyst is larger than, has more foliation than two gems. So Amethyst cannot be difficult. It has to be one of these two. Um, oh, we also know that Emerald cannot be at either the extremes. Oh, because eight is eminent, eight and eminent are the same gem. That means that they have to have the same constraints as well. Uh, so let's just sync these up. Eight cannot be sapphire because em emerald cannot be sapphire, or eminent cannot be sapphire. Uh, eminent cannot be amethyst because eight cannot be amethyst. So that solves hardness. Uh, and we know now that Eminent has to be Ruby. Uh, we know that Emerald has to be difficult, and Amethyst has to be perfect. So that solves that. And last but not least, it looks like size is the only thing we still have to look at. Uh, Minuscule is 5, and because 5 is Sapphire, Minuscule also has to be Sapphire. Uh, that leaves Emerald to be small. Uh, with that, it looks like we have a solution for the second puzzle. Alright, on to the third puzzle. So this time there are five categories. Uh, so yeah, getting progressively harder. Uh, let's go through the clues. Clue number one, no two crystals share any same quality. Same as before, can't have duplicates in a column. Number two, ruby is bigger than sapphire, so sapphire has a smaller size than ruby. Uh, sapphire's purity is less than ruby's purity, which is less than amethyst's purity. So under purity, sapphire is less than ruby, which is less than amethyst. Clue number four. Amethyst does, does not have vitreous luster, so amethyst cannot have vitreous luster, that's elimination. Uh, ruby is more lustrous than amethyst, so amethyst is less lustrous than ruby. Uh, and ruby uh, is- amethyst is more lustrous than sapphire. Sapphire is less lustrous than amethyst. Amethyst is not minuscule, so that eliminates that. Uh, Clue number seven, ruby has less foliation than sapphire. Ruby has less foliation than sapphire. Uh, clue number eight, the largest gem is more lustrous than the smallest gem. 
So the largest gem is uh, large, the smallest is minuscule, and the same, the largest is more lustrous. So the minuscule gem must be less lustrous than the large gem. The gem with difficult foliation is smaller than emerald. Uh, so go to size. Uh, difficult foliation is smaller than emerald. Difficult foliation is smaller than emerald. Amethyst has eminent foliation. Uh, so that gives us an answer. And we can eliminate everything else in the same row or column. Um, the gems are in order of ascending hardness. The medium gem. The medium gem, followed by uh, the middling purity gem, followed by the gem with least foliation, which is indistinct, uh, followed by the pearly gem. Okay. And clue number 12, the indistinct gem is also the least pure. So indistinct gem is also impure. Impure is also indistinct. All right. Uh, so first we know that difficult cannot be emerald because difficult is smaller than emerald. So we can eliminate that. Uh, what else? Alright, I think that's the most we can eliminate from there. Uh, let's go through these. Sapphire, it has less luster than two gems. So sapphire cannot be either of the two most lustrous. Ruby is more lustrous than two gems. So ruby cannot be either of the least lustrous. And amethyst cannot be at an extreme. Uh, so now we know that amethyst has to be pearly. And that seems to be the only conclusion we can get so far. Uh, ruby has less foliation than sapphire, so ruby cannot have the most foliation. We already know that though. Sapphire has more foliation than ruby, so sapphire cannot have the least foliation. Um, sapphire is less pure than two gems, so it cannot be pure or flawless. Amethyst is more pure than two gems, so it cannot be impure or middling, and ruby has to be one of the two middle categories. Um, let's see, sapphire is smaller than ruby, so sapphire cannot be the largest, and ruby cannot be the smallest. Um, okay, eminent or pearly? Oh, well, we know that pearly is amethyst. So that tells us that amethyst must have the most hardness. Uh, that also tells us that amethyst cannot be medium, uh, because amethyst is harder than medium, so they can't be the same gem. Amethyst cannot be middling, uh, we already knew that. Amethyst cannot be indistinct, we already knew that as well. Okay. Oh, we know that indistinct and impure must be the same gem. That means, uh, the same constraints apply, so because sapphire can't be indistinct, sapphire can't be impure either. Uh, likewise, ruby can be indistinct, so that gives us the answer for these. Um, and so we use this clue now, so we can get rid of that. Emerald cannot be any of the other p levels of purity. Um, and we know that ruby has less foliation than sapphire, and these are the only two that haven't been filled in yet, so that gives us the answer to these. Uh, sapphire is less pure than ruby, which is less pure than amethyst. Uh, the only way that this works is for sapphire to be middling, ruby to be pure, amethyst to be flawless, because emeralds are already filled in, and those are the three remaining slots. So that covers that. Um... 
Let's see. We know that middling is sapphire. So middling must be the one with the hardness of six. So from this constraint, we know that Ruby has more luster than Amethyst, and since Amethyst is the second most lustrous, Ruby has to be the most lustrous. Um... Oh, because Emerald is bigger than the difficult gem, Emerald cannot be the smallest, which means Minuscule has to be Sapphire. Um... Yeah. So Sapphire has to have less luster than the large gem. Um, and the large... That means Sapphire cannot be the large gem. Oh, uh, we already knew that, though. Uh... Oh, we know that Indistinct is Emerald, so that covers this. So we know the third softest gem must be Emerald. Which then means that the gem with hardness 5 must be Ruby. Uh, oops, must be Ruby here. Um, so then we know that the medium gem, because the medium gem has to be the, the softest one, uh, the medium gem has to be Ruby. Difficult gem is Ruby, uh, so Ruby is smaller than Emerald, so Emerald's bigger than the second biggest gem, so Emerald has to be the largest, which means that Amethyst has to be small. That, uh, so Sapphire is smaller than large, and since large is Emerald, we know that Sapphire has less luster than Emerald. Uh, and for that reason, Sapphire must be Silky and Emerald must be Vitreous. And with that, it looks like the second puzzle, or sorry, the third puzzle, is solved. Alright, on to puzzle number four. This time there are six categories, and this is the last gem puzzle in the main victory road. Uh, I think I should note that uh, this time Radimus is your guide, and if you check uh, an incorrect solution with him uh, six times, uh, then he will actually end up solving it for you, and uh, for that reason, you could skip this puzzle entirely. However, the downside to that is that you do end up losing relationship points, so if you care about that, uh, it's still better to solve it yourself. But now you have to do it within six tries in order to, for that to count. So let's start. Uh, first, no two crystals share any same quality, same as before. Uh, second, the habit of the second hardest gem, that is the gem with the hardness of seven, is less than the habit of the pure gem, which is less than the habit of emerald. At that, uh, the purity, so under purity, um, we know the purity of vitreous is less than the purity of emerald, which is less than the purity of pearly. Uh, clue number four, the luster of minuscule, is less than the luster of medium, which is less than the luster of the hexagonal gem. Uh, clue number five, the hardness of small is less than the hardness of amethyst, which is less than the hardness of pure. Uh, clue number six is about purity. The middling purity's gem the middle impurity gem 
Lusts. Oh, oops. The middle period jumps luster. So this is a luster specific clue. Um, the middling purity gem's luster is less than the luster of a medium gem, which is less than... Oh, the middling purity gem's luster is less than the luster of the medium gem. That's it. Okay. The foliation of the pearly gem. So the foliation, the foliation of the pearly gem is less than uh, the foliation of the vitreous gem, which is less than the foliation of the silky gem. Clue number eight, the habit of the silky gem is less than the habit of the most pure gem. Uh, and the highest purity is flawless. Uh, the size of the impure gem is less than the size uh, of the perfect foliation gem, which is less than the size of the sapphire. Last clue is foliation. The foliation of amethyst is less than the foliation of the second hardest gem, which is seven. Uh, which is less than the foliation of sapphire. All right. So first eliminations we can make because sapphire is bigger than both impure and perfect. We know that sapphire cannot be either of the two smallest gems. We also know that sapphire cannot equal impure, and it also cannot equal perfect. Uh, amethyst is cannot be the softest or the hardest because it is softer than a gem and harder than a gem. Amethyst can also not be small because they're different. They have to be different gems, so small cannot be amethyst, and amethyst cannot be pure either. All right, emerald uh, cannot be at either the extremes. Emerald is more pure than vitreous, so emerald cannot equal vitreous, so that this is an X. Uh, an emerald cannot be pearly, so emerald cannot be pearly here either. Um, we know that amethyst is has less foliation than two gems, so it cannot be either of the two most foliated. And sapphire cannot be either of the two least foliated. We also know that both of them cannot have a hardness of 7. And then Luster... Uh, it doesn't look like we can make any eliminations right off the bat. Uh, Emerald... Uh, is... has a larger, bigger habit than two gems. So Emerald cannot be either of the gems with the least habit. Emerald also cannot be pure. Uh, and Emerald cannot be 7, cannot have a hardness of 7. Okay, so right now by process of elimination, we know that Ruby is a gem with a hardness of 7. Uh, we also know that uh, Emerald is, has to be the one with middling purity. We know that Sapphire uh, has the most foliation. Sapphire has to have imminent foliation. Uh, yeah. Uh, next thing we can do is hardness of 7. We can replace this constraint with uh, Ruby. So no Ruby. Amethyst is less than Ruby, which is less than Sapphire. And because we've made this conclusion, Ruby cannot be the least or the most foliated, so Ruby cannot be indistinct. Um, is eminent uh, stated explicitly anywhere in here? No, it is not. Oh, uh, we now know that middling is emerald, so here. Middling, middling, middling is emerald. So this 
tells us that uh, because emerald is less than medium, or less lustrous than medium, emerald cannot have the most luster. We also know that emerald cannot equal medium. Uh, so we eliminate that. And from here, we now know that emerald has to be silky. Uh, and we know emerald is silky, so we have that. Uh, and from this clue, we also know that emerald cannot be flawless. Uh, we already knew that, though. Uh, and because emerald is harder or has more habit than two gems and has less habit than another gem, uh, emerald has to be tabular. It must be the third most habit. Uh, we can also merge these two constraints together. So uh, seven is less than pure, is less than emerald, is less than flawless. Oh, and we know that the gem with hardness 7 is Ruby. Uh, and because Ruby is less happy than 3 gems, Ruby has to have the least habit. Uh, we also know from this that Ruby cannot be pure or flawless. Uh, so Ruby cannot be pure, Ruby cannot be flawless, therefore Ruby must be impure. Uh, Ruby must be impure, uh, Sapphire must be pure, and Amethyst must be flawless. So that completely solves this. Uh, we know that since Vitreous is less pure than Emerald, and Ruby is the only gem less pure than Emerald, that Ruby must be Vitreous. Uh, Ruby must be Vitreous, so we have that solved. Oh, Amethyst must have a hardness of 6. Which means the small gem must equal the one that has a hardness of 5. Um, for now, I can just add this as a separate thing. Uh, we know that impure is ruby, so that tells us that ruby has to be here. Uh, we know that, know that ruby cannot be perfect either, so that eliminates that as an option. We also know that because ruby is smaller than two gems, ruby cannot be medium or large. Uh, and we solved difficult. Difficult is ruby now. Um, we know that. Uh, which means emerald has to be perfect, and amethyst has to be indistinct. Um, yes. Pearly, vitreous, and silky. We know that silky is emerald. Uh, do we know pearly or vitreous? Uh, we do not know pearly, but we do know vitreous. Uh, vitreous is ruby. So that means pearly... Uh... Curly, in that case, has to be Amethyst. Uh, so, Pearly must be Amethyst. So, Adamantine must be Sapphire. So now, Luster is solved. Um, oh, that's an extra X mistake. Uh, because 5 and small must be the same gem, the same constraints apply. So 5 cannot be sapphire because small cannot be sapphire. And ruby cannot be small because ruby cannot be 5. So that solves this. Uh, so now we know uh, hardness of 5 has to be emerald. And hardness of 8 has to be sapphire. Uh, so small must be emerald, we know that. 
And we also know that Emerald cannot be pure, but that's all the right. Um, perfect foliation is emerald here. Perfect foliation is emerald. Uh, therefore, ruby uh, is smaller than emerald, so ruby has to be minuscule. Uh, and sapphire could be either one of these. Uh, we know that pure is sapphire. So the second smallest habit has to be sapphire. Hexagonal has to be sapphire. So coxcomb must be amethyst. Uh, and we know that. So flawless must also be amethyst. Uh, and I think that is already solved. Early is amethyst. Um, yeah, that's already solved. So it looks like all we have left to do is signs. Uh, we know that hexagonal is sapphire. So sapphire cannot be medium or minuscule. So sapphire must be large. Amethyst must be medium. And with that, it looks like puzzle four is now complete. And on to the final puzzle. So this puzzle is significantly harder than uh, the previous ones, and I'll you'll see why in a second. Uh, and this is a puzzle that you don't actually solve in the main game. Uh, this is in a hidden room that opens up in a specific legendary quest in the post game, specifically the Victini quest. Uh, you may have noticed that there are some X's already marked here. That is because in that room, there are rocks in certain locations blocking you from pushing that stone into that spot. And those are clues in itself, because we've already eliminated some. Uh, just like the previous puzzle, there are six categories. And uh, also, if you get it wrong six times in a row, uh, and like if you talk to Bennett with an incorrect solution six times in a row, uh, the puzzle will also just be completed. Uh, and you can skip this entirely. Uh, and, but however, I believe you also lose relationship points here, but I'm not as clear for this specific puzzle. So let's start. Uh, as usual, no two crystals share any same quality. We've seen that already. Uh, clue two, the purity of the coxcomb gem. So if we go to purity, uh, purity of the coxcomb gem is less than the purity of the minuscule gem, which is less than the purity of the vitreous gem. Uh, clue number three, the hardness of eminent is less than the hardness of the perfect gem, which is less than the hardness of the cubic gem. Now, the purity of the gem with a hardness of five Purity of the gem with hardness of 5 is less than the purity of the gem with perfect foliation, which is less than the purity of the pearly gem. Okay, clue number 5, the luster of the tabular gem is less than the luster of the cubic gem, which is less than the luster of the gem with indistinct foliation. The size of the coxcomb gem is less than the size of the indistinct gem, which is less than the size of the gem with a hardness of eight. The foliation uh, of the hexagonal gem is less than the foliation of the large gem, which is less than the foliation of the gem with a hardness of seven. 
Finally, clue number eight, the habit of the flawless gem is less than the habit of the pearly gem, which is less than the habit of the silky gem. So what makes this puzzle so difficult compared to the rest of them is, as you can see in these clues, no gem is explicitly named. So uh, we can't, there's certain eliminations that we just can't make right off the bat. Uh, and the hardest part of this puzzle is uh, starting, figuring out where to start and what you can eliminate right away. But once you get one or two solutions, things kind of fall into place from there. So let's begin. Uh, first step toward eliminating is uh, using the uh, eliminations that those rocks already provided. Uh, so for foliation, we know that emerald and amethyst, both of them cannot be either perfect or eminent. So the only option is for one of them to be indistinct and for one of them to be difficult. So because of the first rule, we now know that ruby and sapphire cannot be indistinct or difficult because those have to be occupied by either emerald or amethyst. So that's the first step. Uh, another step is, as you can see, there are two constraints here uh, for purity. And uh, something you'd have to realize is that vitreous and pearly, both of them are purer than two gems. But you notice here that they are both categories pertaining to luster. Uh, as a result, they have to be different gems. So vitreous and pearly, uh, between the pure and the flawless gem, one of them has to be the vitreous gem and one of them has to be the pearly gem. So everything else, Coxco, minuscule, five and perfect, must be either impure or middling. And this only works out um, for following these constraints when coxcomb uh, five and impure are the same gem and minuscule uh, perfect and middling must be the same gem that's the only way that uh that uh they can be all less than uh the their respective gems uh, and from that, uh, let me just copy and paste this over to the relevant categories. Uh, five and impure. Uh, oh, coxcomb. Coxcomb is here. And then minuscule, perfect, and middling. Uh, minuscule uh, and perfect. Uh, and from that, uh, since we know that these have to be the same gem. Any eliminations that apply to one of them have to apply to all of them. So in the case of coxcomb five and impure, uh, we've already seen that coxcomb cannot be ruby. So five cannot be ruby. Um, sorry about that. Uh, five cannot be ruby and impure cannot be ruby either. Uh, for minuscule, perfect, and middling, we know that perfect cannot be emerald or amethyst, so minuscule cannot be either of those, and middling also cannot be either of those. Uh, we also know just from this clue, hexagonal has less foliation than two gems, so hexagonal has to be either indistinct or difficult. Those are the only, only uh, criteria that's less foliation than two gems. Uh, and either way, it cannot be ruby or sapphire, so we know that hexagonal cannot be ruby or sapphire. Uh, similarly, because seven has more foliation than two gems, set the gem with a hardness of seven has to be the same as either the perfect or the eminent gem. And both of them have the strength that they cannot be emerald or amethyst, so we can eliminate that. And we can also take this a step further. Yes, uh, because seven is either perfect or eminent. We've established that. 
Uh, here we have the constraint that eminent is softer than perfect, which is softer than cubic. And we can see here that this gem cannot be eminent, because for the gem to be eminent, it must be softer than two gems. And a gem with a hardness of seven is not softer than two gems. So by that elimination, we now know for sure that the gem with a hardness of seven must be perfect. And the next step requires a little bit of thinking, because uh, now we know that eminent has the constraint that it can't be emerald or amethyst, and because eminent is softer than the gem with hardness 7, or the perfect gem, uh, it must be either 5 or 6. Uh, this part takes a little bit of mental gymnastics to figure out, so uh, bear with me as I try to explain this. Uh, the end result of this is that uh, the gem with hardness 8 cannot be ruby or sapphire. So... We know that the eminent gem, which cannot be emerald or amethyst, has to either have a hardness of 5 or 6. Suppose that the eminent gem had a hardness of 5. Then these would be eliminated. And... The only options for Emerald and Amethyst is for one of them to have a hardness of 6 and one of them to have a hardness of 8. Uh, thus, uh, the one with a hardness of 8 has to be either Emerald or Amethyst. Uh, so it cannot be Ruby or Sapphire. Now let's rewind. Suppose that the Eminence Gem had a hardness of 6. You would then eliminate these two. And the only options for Emerald and Amethyst is for one of them to have a hardness of 5 and for one of them to have a hardness of 8. Therefore, the gem with a hardness of 8 must be either Emerald or Amethyst, so it cannot be Ruby or Sapphire. So as you see, with both options, uh, the gem of a hardness of 8 cannot be Ruby or Sapphire. And from this constraint, and the fact that 7 and Perfect are the same gem, we now know, since Cubic is harder than Perfect, uh, that means Cubic has to have Hardness of 8. Therefore, the gem with a Hardness of 8 uh, and Cubic have the same eliminations, so Cubic cannot be Ruby or Sapphire. And now finally, we got an answer for one of them. Ruby must be Tabular. So no other gem can be tabular, and sapphire must must be coxcomb. Uh, now uh, we know coxcomb, so five and impure must also be sapphire. So five is sapphire, and impure is also sapphire. Just delete that to reduce clutter. And you can see here, pure must be emerald. Middling must be ruby. And flawless must be amethyst. And that solves that. Uh, since we know that middling is ruby, we know minuscule and perfect must also be ruby. So minuscule is ruby. Uh, and perfect is also ruby. Perfect is also ruby. Uh, and we know seven must also be ruby as well. That takes care of that. Now, oh, eminent must be sapphire. Okay. The gem with a hardness of seven is ruby. So we can replace this seven here with ruby. And now we know the hexagonal and large, both of them cannot be ruby. Uh, but we already knew that for both of them. 
Uh, and since Ruby is the has the third most foliation, um, and it has more foliation than two gems, uh, hexagonal or indistinct must be hexagonal, and difficult must be large for uh, to adhere to those constraints. So hexagonal is indistinct. Difficult is large. Uh, from that, uh, we know that now know that large cannot be sapphire because uh, uh, eliminations copy over for equalities. Uh, and indistinct and hexagonal, uh, they already have the same eliminations anyway. Moving on, what else do we know? We know that coxcomb is sapphire. Uh, so because Sapphire is smaller than two gems, Sapphire must be one of the first two gems, so it cannot be medium. In addition, Sapphire cannot be indistinct, and it cannot have a hardness of eight. We already know that. So now we know small has to be Sapphire. Uh, we know that Eminent is Sapphire. So Eminent here is Sapphire. Uh, thus... Sapphire cannot be perfect, and it cannot be cubic. Uh, we already know that it cannot be perfect, and we already know that it cannot be cubic. Uh, the perfect gem is Ruby. Uh, we know that Ruby cannot be cubic. Uh, but we already knew that. Uh, also, Ruby cannot be at either of the extremes, and Cubic is harder than Ruby. So Cubic, a Cubic gem must be the same as the gem with a hardness of 8. 8 and Cubic must be the same gem. We know that the coxcomb gem is sapphire. So, sapphire cannot be minuscule. And sapphire cannot be vitreous. So, that's limited. Um, we know the minuscule gem is ruby. So, we know that ruby cannot be vitreous. We know the gem with the hardness of five is sapphire. So sapphire cannot be perfect or pearly. So sapphire cannot be pearly. And we know perfect is ruby and vitreous and pearly. One of them is uh, emerald and one of them is amethyst. And tabular, cubic, and indistinct. Uh, we know that the tabular gem is ruby. So we know that ruby cannot be either of the two most lustrous because it is less lustrous than two gems. In addition, ruby cannot be cubic and ruby cannot be indistinct. So ruby is solved for luster. And Sapphire is as well. Flawless is less than Pearly is less than Silky. We know that Flawless is Amethyst. So Amethyst cannot be Pearly, and it cannot be Silky either. So Amethyst cannot be Pearly, Amethyst cannot be Silky. We already know that, okay. So then we know that Amethyst is Vitreous, and Emerald is Pearly. So that covers that. Amethyst is less than Emerald, is less than Silky, which is Ruby. Uh, and Ruby is the, has the third most habit, so the first two must be in order, Amethyst, and then Emerald. And 
and that solves habit. And we know that hardness H equals cubic. So hardness H must be the same, which is amethyst. So amethyst is a hardness of H, which means emerald has to be the one with a hardness of six. And indistinct equals hexagonal. And since hexagonal is emerald, that means indistinct is also emerald, which means difficult must be amethyst. And then last but not least, size. We know that large is the same as difficult. Since difficult is amethyst, large must be amethyst. And that covers size. And now we have a solution for the final puzzle. And that's a wrap. I hope this guide was helpful. If you want to see me do out any other puzzles from this game, uh, feel free to leave a note in the comments below. Uh, thanks for watching.